Hello and welcome. I think we've picked the wettest and windiest day in the last six months to come and have a look at uh, Coningsborough Viaduct. So we're just outside Doncaster. Um, we're just, well, we're, we're trying to find it at the minute. So I don't know, have you seen, have you caught a glimpse of it yet? Do we no, need to no, ask someone? What's that sign say? Railway Viaduct Bridge. Ah, that must be it. She's a beast, isn't she? So I was looking down from the side of the river, done now. A nice lattice steel, steel bit in the middle there, going over. Camera's getting soaked with raindrops. So Coningsborough Viaduct is situated somewhere in between Doncaster and Rotherham. You can see on Google Maps there's Doncaster and there's Rotherham just out of view at uh, the bottom left. And Coningsborough is roughly in the middle of the screen there. Now let's have a closer look on Rail Map Online. Uh, we can see uh, Coningsborough Viaduct there, that's the green line, that's the Dern Valley Railway. Uh, the orange line on the, on the top, that's the disused Hull and Barnsley Railway. And the blue one in the centre, um, going from left to right, that is the current Sheffield to Doncaster line. So if you're travelling between Sheffield and Doncaster, just after leaving Coningsborough Station, if you look to your right, you'll see the viaduct. Now, I'm really sorry, I don't know the origins of these next two photographs. Well, the first one we can see is steam train going over there, heading in the direction of Doncaster. And this next one shows the viaduct under construction, which started in 1906 and completed in 1909. In terms of length, it's 465 metres long, or 1,527 if you prefer it in feet. And I believe it consists of around 12 million bricks. It was designed to carry double track, although only a single track was ever laid over the viaduct, I understand. Now let me just bring you back to this photograph. Now if you'll notice above the viaduct you'll see the aerial ropeway there. Now this was used to build the viaduct and carry the materials over to each pier and it was known as Blondin. Now here's another old photograph. I borrowed this one from the Coningsborough and Denneby Main Heritage Facebook group. And this one shows the building of that lattice section over the River Don. Now the viaduct closed in 1966 and one of the main reasons I understand was subsidence. Now we just finished another explore and video uh, on the Hull and Barza railway from Sprotborough and Cadeby Tunnel is right next door to the viaduct so if you're looking for something else to explore while you're at the viaduct that's perfect. So we've climbed up the side, the path at the side of the viaduct now, and we're on the old disused track bed. So this was the Dern Valley Railway, ran between Doncaster and Barnsley. Lots and lots of concrete sleepers left lying around on the approach to the viaduct. So here we are, started the viaduct. Yeah, what's this on the left hand side? Looks like the remains of a hut or something possibly, corrugated steel. Difficult to tell. So when you, you walk on these viaducts, it's, it can be hard to try and get a feel for the scale. Um, when you're on it, you don't, I think it's, sometimes it's better to be at the ground looking up than on the viaduct looking off it, if you know what I mean. But we get a nice view down here just on the side so let's have a walk over see this when I was around here when I was on my bike growing up I used to come down here quite a lot and this this was never open to the public big fences stopping anyone going on it but I don't know what year it opened sometimes in the 2010s looking down there into the Don Valley Little recess, refuge point built into the side there. Yeah. That rain's slowing down a bit, isn't it? Now it's sky's really, it is, yeah. 
So let's have a look over this side of the viaduct. These are quite high walls actually. So again, you can see there, straight in front is uh, Conisborough Castle and the little village, town, whatever you want to call it, uh, Conisborough. All these nice days we've had this year and so far this autumn and we've chose the waist and well that wind's disappeared thankfully wouldn't be fun up here in that that wind filming but yeah we've chose the wettest day to come up on here as you can see we've been out walking for about three hours in the rain so far today doing the doing a video on the uh, the Holland Barnsley railway from from Sprotborough water tower on the hill there So this viaduct's made, well the outer shell at least, is made of blue brick but we were just trying to figure out the colour of this but I think it's probably anti-vandal paint that's been put on it. Now this is a bit of a, and they seem to have cleaned it up quite a bit. I always remember this being a bit of a hot spot for graffiti back in the day. But there's not a, yeah you can still see bits of graffiti over there at the bottom, they've painted over that but done a really good job so far of keeping this graffiti free so we're onto the, the steel section in the middle now that goes goes over the river river down down there let's have a look out out the other side over to Conisborough Castle again can't remember the figures now I'm sure I read it was about 35 meters above the ground it feels higher to me you definitely get a little bit more of a perspective of heights when you get on this metal bit because the the walls are quite high on the uh, on the brick arch sections wow that is a crack isn't it that see all all the way through there nearly at the end of the viaduct now so the line from here would go um, through Edlington it's trying to get my bearings where it goes it could be come out coming out of pottery car pottery car nature reserve black car junction there that I did a, um, a video on in a very cold December day last year little concrete sleeper just banged on the end of the viaduct there So we'll walk back over the viaduct now. I hope the rain and the weather hasn't spoilt the footage too much. And uh, then we'll, well, we're heading back to Sprotbury, where we've uh, where we've come from today. So we'll be walking back down um, down the side of the viaduct as well. So we'll get some shots from down there. So there's a view from underneath. Yeah, look at the detail. We were just looking when we were walking down before. Those little, whatever they are, bunch of grapes. <laughs> um, at the, uh, the, the base of the arch there. I think that's about the clearest shot you're gonna get of the viaduct. It was a little bit treed up on the path coming down the river. Back under the steel section now, it means we must be next to the river. I honestly don't know how many arches, I've not 
checked before coming but there's 14 on this first section before the, the steel bit in the middle there's only a few the other side of the river but you can't see every arch from from one place and some of them I don't even know if there's any more hidden in the trees so just to clarify it's 21 arches or 22 spans if you include the metal section it's a debris down underneath it's like that was a coping stone maybe or something off the bridge so I understand the outer shell of this beast is this blue engineering brick but as we've seen when you come across old dilapidated bridges what's really underneath what's really inside the main structure of this is usually just your standard red red brick so that's Conisborough Viaduct nice little walk across it it's great just to come and have a look at it. a lovely little piece of history like that it's behind us there so we'll have to find somewhere that's cold We're up. We're off to find somewhere that's warm, dry off a little bit, and head home. So I hope you've enjoyed that short video. So cheers for watching as always. Thanks for your support. Take care. I'll see you soon.